In this video, I'm gonna do a couple of stress tests on the Asus ROG Ally with Ableton Live 11. After the last video, I had some comments suggesting different ways of putting it through its paces. So I just checked Google and I found a couple of stress tests that I was really happy with. So before I go on, I've got my ROG Ally set up. As you can see here, it's all hooked up via dongle to my screen here. And the first test I wanted to run through was quite a simple one. It's just taking one MIDI track. This, this, uh, this, this test gives you one MIDI track. The project gives you one MIDI track and you just have to duplicate it over and over and over again until everything falls apart or until at least you hear some distortion. So uh, they tell you to set your sample rate to 48,000, which I have done. And then they say to set the buffer size to 2048 or the highest possible. The highest possible on this was 12,128, but that was too much. It was introducing routine like clicking uh, into the footage or into the, into the sample. So I tried 10,000, 8,000, 6,000, and 6,000 was the happy medium. So bear in mind, uh, I managed to put about 180 samples on this without my screen recorder running. I've only got my screen recorder running uh, my camera is running separate, it's not feeding into the ROG, but even still, at 180 with the screen recorder on, it was introducing artifacts, whereas if I didn't have the screen recorder running, 180 uh, was quite doable. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that this works. You're going to hear an initial squeeze of distortion at the beginning, but then after that it runs smoothly. Here we go. So um, managed to handle that pretty well. Um, this clearly isn't a realistic test case because any song you're gonna compose, it may comprise of this many number of tracks, but you're rarely gonna be playing them simultaneously. So let me just add 10 more on. I've maxed out my CPU and GPU settings uh, in the Armory crate for the ROG Ally. So, Let's see, let's see what happens if I add 10 more. I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna work. Okay, 180 tracks. Let's see what happens. Miraculously, it didn't screw up that time it didn't distort i don't know what's happened i did change my uh, gpu and cpu settings here to manual you have windows silent performance and turbo but then you have manual where you can max everything out so i did that and it seems to have actually helped one thing i haven't mentioned the cpu meter is up here it's taking an average of all cores so it should hover around 90 percent well, it didn't fall apart with 180, so let's see if we can do 190. Okay, 190 simultaneous tracks. Here we go. Yeah, so it's falling apart now. Uh, so I would say without the screen recorder, 180 is pushing it, but safe enough. Um, and 170, you probably won't have any issues at all. It depends though. It depends how many effects you have running. This, these are just MIDI tracks that have had no effects running on them whatsoever. That's why I want to use the second test to show a more realistic test case whereby you'll have simultaneous tracks, but they're not all running at the same time, and they have a variety of different effects on every single track. And actually one point worth noting before we move on to the next test, if we can muster about 180 parallel samples playing all at the same time, and we compare it to the benchmark that's provided in this project, we're pretty close to this i9-10900K desktop with 64 gigs of RAM, two terabytes SSD and Windows 11 Pro. 
Now, I checked on Google how much a system like this would cost, less the graphics card, obviously. And I found on Amazon, there's like a, a bare bones computer here that matches the same spec and it's uh, almost a thousand dollars. And the ROG is selling for about $700, just under 699. So it's significantly cheaper and offering the same amount of performance, but it has a screen, it's super portable, and you can dongle it up and use it as a computer. Bargain in my opinion. Okay, for the next test, I found this on Google, but this is for the Live 10 performance test. And actually I've got Live 11, but there is a, uh, a set here that I can load. And this is basically telling you to load the set, set your audio buffer to 512 samples, which I'm not gonna do. I'm just gonna keep it at 6,000 because the system seems quite happy and capable of dealing with that. Set audio input to no device, sample rate to 44, 100. I'm gonna set it to 48, just like the previous. Uh, driver error compensation to zero milliseconds. I'll just check that I've done that. Yeah, it's zero, zero milliseconds. And make sure that only one pair of outputs is active. And that is the case. As you can see here, there are actually 29 tracks I've got here and this is what you get when you click on built-in lessons it will open this window here and then click on what's new in live and then click on live set if you click on live set it will load these 29 tracks same principle behind this one I'm gonna load as many up of these as I can until the sound starts to fall apart now I've already done this but uh, the total number I could get before it was comfortable were 174 tracks. So actually quite similar to what we had before. But bear in mind, a lot of these tracks have effects on them. So equalizers, compressors, speech enhancers, saturator, and they're all different. So there's a lot of other processing that needs to be done uh, with this test. So it's, it's quite impressive that it managed the same number of tracks, even though granted they're not pay, playing at the same time, uh, but you can still have that diversity and variety of tracks here in your set um, and it can handle it. Now saying that, <laughs> it's probably going to fall apart, but let's, uh, let's see, let's check that uh, indeed it's still 174, that's the sweet spot. Once again, make sure you keep an eye on the CPU monitor to see what the load is. And also, um, generally when I found the uh, ROG was struggling was when this lead kicks in around about here. So keep an eye on the CPU and listen out for any distortion. I'm really hoping that there's none because uh, this one was tried and tested, but you never know. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I definitely spoke too soon there. So, all right, let's um, let's shave off the last set of 29. Okay, so we have 145 tracks now. So let's see what happens. delete another another block of these so we're going to be down to 116 samples and if this doesn't work then I need to record this again Just 
so pretty good. CPU was hovering just under 90 and then just under 80. So 116 tracks doesn't sound like much, but it is pretty good when you consider that all of these tracks have their own effects put on them. I'm no pro when it comes to Ableton, but I think you could probably make a song out of 116 tracks. So 116 tracks might not be that mind blowing, but I did notice that I had Google Chrome running in the background, which might explain the difference in performance compared to when I was testing it yesterday when I didn't have Chrome running at all. I killed it in the task manager also. Nevertheless, this still does give a decent approximation of what this little thing is capable of. So I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to be running DaVinci Resolve and pushing it as far as it can go on the ROG so we can see what it's capable of in a similar context. You know the drill. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see any more of my content, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And until the next time, I'll see you in the next video.